Hey YouTube, long time no see. I'm really sorry for neglecting you so much recently. I don't even have a good excuse. I just didn't really have anything to say. I'm not one of those YouTubers who can just like make videos willy nilly. Unless I have a specific point to make, I'm probably not gonna film anything. But I've been told that I should make more videos and I asked on Instagram, what would you all like to see? And a lot of people said, a video about asexuality, a video about how I came to realize that I'm asexual. And I realized then that I hadn't done that already. I really thought I had. And I realized that it's probably because I've spoken about it at events and stuff. And I didn't realize that I completely neglected to mention it to you. So hopefully this will fill in some blanks. Um, but a little disclaimer, if you're looking for a dose of LGBT plus tragedy porn to brighten your afternoon. This is not that kind of video. There's a reason why I'm not in the thumbnail. Like, <laughs> it's not that kind of story. Um, this also isn't going to be a tale of kinky sexual failed experimentation. So if you were hoping for something juicy like that, again, it's not that kind of video. But if you're still interested, then keep watching. So it all began in primary school, late primary school. Prior to that, I had not really paid sexuality or romanticism that much mind when it came to myself. Obviously, I knew it existed. I didn't have, I'm not a sex repulsed person. I, I, I thought it was all quite intriguing, but um, yeah, well, it definitely wasn't something I thought of engaging in myself. Um, and then, I came back after the summer of one year. I must have been between the ages of about nine and 11. And I realized that everything had changed. It was like Rick Grimes waking up in The Walking Dead and realizing that everyone was behaving very differently and the society around them had changed. Um, the hormones had done a number on everybody, it would seem. Boys and girls were no longer playing together. They all had to fancy each other. They all had to go out with each other. To this day, I don't know where they were going, but everyone was doing it. Girls were literally fighting in the cafeteria over boys. It was like, it was like that scene in Mean Girls. <laughs> it was absolutely bizarre to me. I thought it was all very silly. I didn't understand why everyone was behaving this way, but I assumed this is part of puberty. This is what happens. This will happen to me. It wasn't something I was going to encourage, but it was something I assumed would kick in. But I was, even at 11 years old, I was so over, like, the way romanticism was being pushed onto me. It actually really affected one of my friendships because I used to get along quite well with boys. And one of my best friends in primary school was a boy, but people kept insisting that, oh, do you fancy him? Does he fancy you? Are you going out? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? And it was so much like, pressure on the friendship but in the end we just stopped hanging out with each other because we didn't want to have to deal with all of this like weirdness that was being projected onto us and it's ironic because i'm pretty sure that he's gay now and i'm asexual so that really wouldn't have been a good match but yeah that's how it was going and i know for me it wasn't like a it wasn't a big deal if you see my video um, about, you know, being an alternative black girl, growing up as a black girl, I had so many quirks. This was just another quirk. It wasn't like a devastating thing to realize I was different because I was already so different from everybody else anyway. It wasn't a big deal. But I specifically decided that I wanted to go to an old girls school, to a secondary school, because I didn't want to have to deal with um, all of this, like, romanticism all the time. I, my theory was that if there were no boys around, then this wouldn't be a big deal. How wrong was I? <laughs> so I was in secondary school from about 2007 till 2011, I think. Uh, 2011, 2012. And um, this was during the age of like twilight. So even though there were no physical boys around, girls were still projecting their attention in different areas and it still really dominated the atmosphere. It was either Team Edward, Team Jacob, who's your favorite Jonas brother, who's the hottest guy in Metro Station, who's the hottest guy in Black Veil Brides, My Chemical Romance, Bring Me the Horizon. And if it wasn't bad enough that it was all about singers and actors and fictional characters, it was freaking cartoons at one point. Everyone was cribbing themselves with anime characters and I was like, for the love of God, everybody. <laughs> Can't we just be? And people started to notice that I wasn't 
reacting to things in the same way as everyone else. So I didn't have that same interest. And it, it did draw attention to me and it did raise speculation. I think one of the main ones was that people thought I was gay. Um, and I had to consider, am I gay? No, because I'm, I'm definitely not interested in doing anything sexual with a woman. I'm not romantically or sexually attracted to women. Um, and I'm not sexually or romantically attracted to men either. But it, and it was something where as I got older, I realized it still wasn't kicking it. And I had to start asking myself questions as to why. Um, one of the visions I always had in my head was that like everyone was in a car going along a bridge and the upper end of the bridge is like sexuality. And I had somehow done something to break the bridge and my car plummeted into the depths below and I'd never been able to reach that side. And I was trying to work out what did I do to make this happen or not happen. And I thought, well, maybe it's because when I was in primary school, I thought it was also silly. Maybe I reacted too strongly and I broke the process. Or maybe it's because I'm too immature. Maybe, you know, I was the kind of teenager who wasn't trying to act older. I was quite happy, you know. I still watched brass movies and played WWE video games. And I had action figures and dolls and teddies in my room. And I wasn't wearing makeup. And I thought, okay, maybe it's because I'm... I'm not at that point yet. I thought maybe it's because I wasn't very comfortable in how I looked. I didn't expect people to find me attractive, so maybe I was preventing myself from finding other people attractive. I thought maybe it's because I'm kind of shy, I have social anxiety, maybe that's preventing me from forming that kind of connection with somebody. Um, I had all kinds of theories, honestly, and to be honest, none of them, none of them are right. Um, funnily enough, the one everyone tries to impart onto is uh, that you have a hormone problem. That never crossed my mind because I've always, my hormones function very well, trust me. So that was definitely not on my list of possible causes, but I did even think at one point, this is going to sound really dark and really weird, but like people try and say, oh, you've had a bad experience and that's why you feel like this. And I tried to rack my brain thinking, did I have a bad experience? Was I abused at some point? And I wasn't, but I was like, have I forgotten? Is it possible that it happened and I forgot and I stored it in my subconscious and I was going all Freudian with it? And that wasn't it either, but I did seriously consider that because I was thinking there must be a reason for this. Um, and especially like it wasn't just within school, there comes an age where people suddenly become really interested in your romantic life. It's really weird. Um, where people start asking you or your parents, oh, is she seeing anyone yet? She has an age where she's interested in boys. You're having to deal with that. And I wasn't. And at first it's like, oh, okay, well, she's being well behaved. She's focused on school. She's too young for all of that. It's fine. But after a while, it's kind of like, okay, a bit weird now. Like, are you sure you're not feeling anything? Um, and I, I didn't have the language to explain it. I came up with a whole bunch of words, a whole bunch of little explanations. I was like, oh, I'm just not interested. I used to say I'm uninvolved because I used to think that like, I saw this being a bit of a game for like, romance and, and sexual relationships. And I was just trying to explain that like, my piece isn't on the board. I'm not playing the game. They're just not describing me as being single as though I'm actively, actively engaged in this part of our culture. I'm not. I'm not doing it. You wouldn't ask me if I'm single when I'm eight. Don't ask me if I'm single now because not like my sexual feelings haven't changed since then. Um, but it, it, it wasn't really a satisfactory answer and people still speculated. I had my, uh, like, uh, someone quite close to me uh, at the time sincerely asked me if I was a pedophile or if I was sexually attracted to objects because I said I'm not attracted to men and I'm not attracted to women. And... It just like, it was, it was weird because I was actually like, it wasn't a big deal to me. It's something I was trying to work out, but it wasn't something I was stressing over until people started questioning me. And some of these questions were very invasive questions. Not, well, I mean, being asked to repeat if I was pretty invasive and pretty bad. But you know, people were asking like, well, do you watch porn? Do you masturbate? How would this feel? How would that feel? What if this happened? What if that happened? And I was like, oh my God, leave me alone. <laughs> just leave me be. It was, it was, it was a lot. And I didn't realize there was a word for it until I was about 
I used to say 14, but I think it was probably about 15. Um, when someone was asking me again um, what my sexuality was, and I said by default, I was like, I don't know, straight, I guess, maybe. And they were like, well, are you attracted to men? And I was like, no. And they're like, attracted to women? And I was like, no. And then they were like, well, then you're not straight. You're not gay. Um, maybe you're asexual or something. And I was like, hmm. So I Googled that, and I found the Asexuality, Visibility, and Education Network, Avon, and I started watching like YouTube videos and stuff, and I was like, you guys are taking the words out of my mouth. Like, I can't deny that my experiences are strikingly similar to the experiences of these other people. This phenomenon is, is what I'm experiencing and not experiencing. And yeah, I realized that there's a word for it. This is it. Can't deny it. Um, and it was, it was nice to know that it was a legitimate thing. It wasn't a side effect of anything else. It wasn't a personality issue. It wasn't any of those other things. And to be honest, as I got older, I kind of gained evidence for that myself because I've definitely become a lot more confident in how I look. And people are definitely attracted to me, so that's definitely not an issue. I've always been quite a sex-positive person, so it's nothing to do with my attitudes. I'm just do with my looks. I'm a lot more outgoing now, um, so it's definitely nothing to do with being kind of socially anxious. I don't really deal with that much anymore. Um, so yeah, I realized there was a what. I realized it was a thing. But to be honest, that's only half the journey, in my opinion, because even though I know it's a thing, no one else knows it's a thing. And sexuality is not on the world's radar. There is very little awareness for it, very little representation, very little in the way of education. So it, doesn't, it hasn't really changed the way people react to me. I still have people placing these misconceptions onto me, people treating me in a particular way, people speculating about me, people telling me what I am and what I'm not, and why I am and why I'm not. And that part, to be honest, hasn't really changed. Um, but I knowing that there's a word has definitely increased my sense of community and it's allowed me to use the platform that I gained through modeling to try and be that representation, try and raise awareness and I know while my story might not be particularly harrowing and dramatic, I know that there are asexual people who have had like a much harder time and if any if there's anything I can do to help with that just by you know just by being open about it then I'm gonna keep doing that. So yeah, now you know. That's how I realized that I was asexual. Don't know if that's the kind of thing you're expecting, but I hope you were able to gain something from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm going to try and be a bit more active on this channel. I have other things I think that I can talk about. Um, but in the meantime, you can check me out on Instagram at the Yasmin Benoit. I post on there quite often. I need to do my modeling, my activism, etc., etc. Um, also, I recently joined Twitter at the Yasmin and Benmar as well. Plus, you need to check out my new documentary, guys. I forgot to mention that. Um, it was by Sky News. It's called Life Without Sex and Sexuality Explained. I'll include a link to that in the bio. It includes some other people you might recognize from asexuality activism. And, uh, yeah, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Or don't. I don't really mind. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.